Good morning everyone and welcome to Sugar and Crumbs. My name is Tracy Mann and I need to put my comments on actually because you know what, I won't know what's going on. I just do that bit, <laughs> very important so I can talk to you. Um, good morning, um, I'm here today to give you another little painting demonstration. So I'm here most, most Thursdays at half past 11, sometimes it goes a bit skew with but I am definitely here today um, and I'm going to just show you some painting ideas to do with using lettering. So picking your initial and then putting some flowers and painting bits and pieces over the top of it. For those of you that follow me on Instagram, you will already have seen it this morning because I put um, a little post up. I normally put a post up just before I come on here live so that you can actually see what it is I'm gonna do, that helps. Um, and then you can get an idea whether you want to tune in or as we're all now starting to go back to school, if you've missed it and you're on catch up, hello, you're very welcome. And um, if you have any questions, even if I'm I'm not live I'm more than happy to help you so if you're watching this at a later date because you've got kids in school um, then that's no problem don't worry because it's all changed isn't it now there's my Instagram page if anybody wants to keep up to date with what comes on with these demonstrations because I do put usually when I'm organized um, a picture up the day before or the morning before um, to show you what it is I'm going to do today and so today we're looking at initials or lettering let me get rid of that so you can see so we're looking at this kind of thing today so if your name or your letter you want to paint begins with a letter T you're in luck because <laughs> that's what I'm going to be doing uh, but I will have a look and go through um, what you can do if you're changing different letters how I came up with this letter um, apart from the fact it's the letter T I'm talking about how I actually created it um, and then you can go ahead and do the same as well so fingers crossed hopefully you will be able to paint something lovely like that that would be fun wouldn't it there are a few of you tuning in I wasn't sure I just thought I'm not sure today because I think a lot of people will have gone back to work and school and all these other bits and pieces so for everybody that is tuned in this morning you're very welcome. I'm very pleased to still be here doing my demonstrations. I've spoken to um, Carol and I'm going to be doing some more evening demonstrations throughout October and November and December on Tuesday evenings. So that's where I will be found going through those months is Tuesday evenings. I've been on Mondays for a while. I was on Monday evening this week. If anybody didn't see my cake, I've still got it. That's because I can't part with it now. You see, this is it. So this is the cake I did on Monday evening. So if you fancy how having a go at something like that then do go back onto the sugar and crumbs page just go back and find the video from monday night and you'll be see and you will see this cake that i did on there so this was a chocolate transfer sheet cake i've got it around the wrong way haven't i happy birthdays backwards let's try that way around <laughs> i'm thinking how does that read i'm reading it but that means you're reading it the wrong way around so anyway there you go so that's what i did on monday so if you are interested in having a go at something like this do watch the tutorial it's really straightforward if it's something that um, you look at and think, no, nah, I won't be able to do this, I promise you, you will. It's really, really nice and straightforward. I only do simple and effective. I keep saying this. I don't do complicated. I do simple and effective. So that's my kind of um, my kind of work. So coming up next week on my Facebook page, so I have a closed Facebook page for this. I'm teaching Autumn Tree next Tuesday night. That looks like this. So if you would like to join that class, then you just need to go to my website and sign up. It's £10 to follow the class live with me. Or if you don't want to follow the class live with me, but you would like to get involved, you can still sign up for it and um, you can then basically watch it in your own time. So if you want to keep this as a reference, then this is a really, really good um, idea for this one because trees are so popular on cakes. I don't know how many of you put um, trees on cakes, but I do. I put lots of trees on cakes. Um, people who are cycling, walking. Um, walking is very popular, isn't it, at the moment? Um, all sorts of things like that. And I thought well, we'll do an autumn tree and we're also going to be using a different brush as well because it's always good to keep moving on with the times. So we are using a fan brush as well. I'm trying to find out. Let's put it on the other camera because otherwise it goes against my clothes, doesn't it? There we go. That's a fan brush. So that's what we're going to be using for this particular project. If you don't have um, one of these fan brushes, um, you can still do the tree without, but it looks lovely and it's really, really good. You'll be surprised. Um, just the effects that you get with this particular brush for doing trees actually uh, and grass I've got another project coming out shortly which involves using this as grass and this makes fabulous grass um, 
even I'm thinking, well, I'm never going to make grass any other way but with this now. So that's coming out soon as well. So hopefully. Oh, a few of you did watch me on Monday. <laughs> It's normally quite chaotic on a Monday. I'm normally running around doing various things. Today I'm sat still, which is much more my kind of thing. <laughs> you never know. I mean, honestly, every time I go live, I think, oh, I'm sure it'll be fine. But sometimes it gets quite hot under the lights and all various things. But no, it's so far so good. It's been it's been good. And, and I was really pleased. And I know, yes, I have still got that cake. Um, the other cake that I did that was on Instagram with the same... Um, I did a different pattern, didn't I? I did a butterfly one. Now that's been eaten. That one has gone off to um, my daughter's work and they have consumed that one. So that one doesn't exist anymore. But the other one is still with me at the moment um, and probably will stay with me. We'll see. I keep lots of my demonstration pieces to remind myself what exactly I've done because sometimes I can't remember. So it's nice to kind of look over in my box and go, oh yeah, I remember doing that and that and that. So if anyone else asks me a demo, um, I can usually then remember what it is that I'm, I can do again i did um i was on the british sugar craft guild board last night the region one some of you are on here there's several of you on here actually from that particular region doing a demonstration on the cocoa butter painting so that was nice nice to meet um some more people on that particular group as well so if any of you are sugar craft guild people and you would like an online demonstration, a Zoom online demonstration, do get in touch with me. Um, I, don't, I do charge, but I do actually give that money to a specific charity. So if you want to um, have a demonstration on cocoa butter painting, not one of my chaotic chocolate ones, I reserve those for uh, evenings, uh, then you are just do get in touch with me and I'll be happy to do that for you. So um, next week, as I say, is Autumn Tree. If you would like to do any of the live paints, do go to the website. There's loads there. doesn't matter where you are. Even if you're in Sydney, Australia, I've just seen you come up on there, Helen. If you're in Sydney, Australia, you can still paint along with me. This is what's so lovely about it, um, that you can join in wherever you like. This is the joy of all this online stuff. So yes, you're, you're very welcome at all costs. So today we're going to be doing some more cocoa butter painting, which is what I tend to do on Thursdays. I teach this. This is what I have. I have an online cake painting school and I have everything from beginners right up to advanced. And you're thinking, well, what's a beginner look like? What does an advanced look like? So beginners, I'm going to show you one project for the beginners that they're doing currently. So this is, I'll put it under my other camera so you can see it better. So this is the beginner's lot. So this is what they're doing at the moment. So there's four different projects with this, but this is one of the um, beginner's projects. So there's four of those together. And they're really lovely to get involved in as well. They're not too complicated. You don't need to be able to draw because everyone always goes, oh no, I can't draw, I can't draw. Honestly, it's absolutely fine. I can get you through it. Do not worry. So that's that. I'm going to show you these as well. Now, I know that if any of my beginners who've signed up for my course, they're going to be jumping up and down when they see this because I promised if they completed all four demonstrations, they would get one of these lovely things. So my certificates have arrived this morning. So if anybody has signed up for the beginners cocoa butter cake painting course, I have offered a certificate if you complete them because it's very nice actually buying a course, but you need to complete it really. And there's four lovely little projects on there. So the people that have completed these, I will be signing them off and sending them off to you uh, through the post. So they will be arriving shortly. So that's exciting, isn't it? Do love a good certificate. So I've got lots of these. So come on, I need you to all get painting now <laughs> so I can hand out your certificates. So that's all up there and ready to go. So painting is easy, it's straightforward. And actually, the when someone sits and explains it to you, you think, oh, is that it? Is that what I was thinking? It's it's really that easy and straightforward. And the joy of this is once you set up, it's really low cost. You literally have all your equipment, which you use again and again and again. You might need to buy a few extra dusts, but in general, you will be just literally painting and on a bit of sugar paste. So it's quite sort of low like that. If I took the beginners class, would you send a list of materials? Yes, of course, no problem. That's absolutely fine. Um, that Yes, Maureen, no problem. Yes, just get in contact with me and I will sort you out. That's absolutely fine. Just drop me a little message via my, say, one of my social media platforms or my website. That's fine. I'll put it up again later on so you can see it. So we're going to do a letter this morning and I'm going to turn my camera down in a minute so that um, you can have a look at what I've got going on. Um, say the letter T. Um, I mean, I had to go for T, didn't I? I mean, 
<laughs> I could have gone for any letter really and I, I do wish my first name was a slightly different shape but it isn't I would have liked it to have been a C or something else but it isn't so anyway we've gone for the letter T um, and what I did I went on to uh, I just went into Word so just a normal Word program and I picked a font so I just went through I put T on the page and I went through and I just kept clicking until I found one that I liked and that is all I did I didn't do anything strange or unusual I literally just did that so it's very straightforward nothing too difficult to think about trying to do it freehand quite difficult not something I would want to do particularly I would like some boundaries I would like to be able to see exactly where this letter starts and stops I don't want to end up with it um you know being quite random and and as human beings actually trying to paint something you know I want to paint the T it's going to be slightly bigger on one side and maybe a bit too long on the other side just trace it why not let's just do it that way let's keep it simple let's not complicate things and let's see how we get on so I'm going to turn my camera down again so you can see so all the painting I do is cocoa butter all of it is on sugar paste okay so you will need um, some sugar paste to do something like this this is just a little cake card um, it's got some pale green I think it's pale green might be pale blue you never know with me pale green pale blue sugar paste on here preferably not white it's better if it's not white although having said that I did do this on white looking at this um, it just makes it pop a bit more if you do it on a pale pastel color it's very unusual for me I must have been on must have been um, not thinking that day but that's okay um, so all I'm going to do is I've got some tracing paper this is my letter that I printed out on a piece of paper earlier today and all I'm going to do is just to trace my letter to start with so round we go just a straightforward pencil nothing complicated now the thing is with this as well you can actually just have a practice so you don't have to paint on a cake all right so when people start cake painting you can paint on cake cards you don't have to be straight onto a cake and do you know what that takes an awful lot of pressure out of it because loads of people are worried They'll do this amazing cake and then they think, uh oh, here we go. I'm going to have to do, um, I'm going to have to paint this onto a cake and it's very important, this cake, and I mustn't mess it up. And oh no, I've messed it up. Disaster. So by doing it on plaques and other bits and pieces, and you can um, get your practice in. But not only can you get your practice in, you can also, for example, let me just get you, whoops, let's bring this in. So this, for example, I paint in one of my live classes. If I painted this on a cake card, which is what I've done here, I could then put this on top of an eight inch round cake. I could pipe all the way around the outside edge and then I can give it to somebody and they'll go, wow, that's amazing. I don't want to cut it. And you go, well, that's good because you can pop your knife in under there, twist it and you've got your plaque. You can lift it straight off. So they've then got something to keep. So don't feel the pressure to actually paint directly onto a cake. You can easily do it on a plaque and remove it. It's no problem at all. And, and actually for confidence, it works really, really well. Um, I find this is really successful. And if you'd like to have a go at the elephant, it is on the website. So um, you should be able to find that no problem at all. So that's a live paint, that one. So going back to my letter T, um, I've taken my, I've done my little letter T there and I've turned it over. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to trace over this with some pencil. Just go straight back over the lines. It's sort of straight. I sort of went off on a tangent here. It's because I was talking at the same time. Um, I'll just go down there. Follow it round. And down there. There we go. So I think I went across the top, but I can't remember, so I'm going to do it again anyway. So there we go. All right, let's get rid of that because we don't need that anymore. And then I've got myself um, just a little round plaque here. It's a five inch round. It's not very big. And just remember, this is a practice as well. So you can pick your letters. It doesn't really matter. Obviously, you need to pick letters that mean something to you. This is my, my first letter of my name. So I thought, right, we'll go for that. And then all you do then is just transfer your letter onto your sugar paste. Now my sugar paste I did yesterday, it's a little bit soft, I can feel it underneath, but generally, if you're transferring images onto plaques, do them in advance, or sometimes people bake their cake boards in the oven, don't they? I don't do that particularly, I try to be a bit more organized, but um, 
Uh, I tend to do loads of them in one go and then I realise I've run out and then I run into difficulties. <laughs> Before you take it off, if you just pull it back like that, just to check it's there, so you should be able to see that. I'm reading this. Can you frame the painting to hang on the wall or would the cocoa butter melt? Do you know what? You can frame them if you want to. What you need to make sure you do is don't put them. Um, I personally wouldn't put glass over the top of it and I would make sure it's not facing a window with any direct sunlight that's coming through. Um, otherwise, you're going to find um, that the sun will beat down on it and it will then uh, melt. So, yes. And uh, funny enough, it doesn't melt as in run. It melts as in gets, um, you can see it getting shiny. And the temptation is then to come along with some kitchen roll and kind of blot it to try and stop the problem. Um, but actually what you will end up doing is pulling all the paint off. So if you do have something that um, goes shiny, then just kind of remove it from the heat and it will set again really quickly. You know, you can pop it back in the fridge so um, and it will soon set. Uh, it's just, so it is affected by heat um, because it's a product that we're going to melt. So I hope that answers that question. Right. OK. So we're going to uh, melt some cocoa butter. So I'm going to show you how I do it. I'm just trying to, I'm going to remove my board for a second, actually, just see if I can get it all in a bit closer. And there we go. And then I can get my, there we go. All right. So I use one of these. Now, this is a chrome food warmer. The only thing I would say with this, it's not an essential piece of equipment, but it's great if you do start doing a lot of painting. So you can just use a small bowl with some boiling water in it and just pop over the top of it either a china plate or something like this which is a metal paint palette and this gets hot and um, because this gets hot it then melts the cocoa butter which is what we're going to be painting with today so let's show you how this works so if you do it with the water method so water in a bowl um, you will have to change your water approximately every 20 minutes because the water will cool down. If you use one of these, which is this chrome food warm, it's got a tea light in the middle that I've just lit. And so you've got a constant heat source. It's up to you. Some people prefer to move around. I personally, once I'm sat still, would prefer to just keep painting rather than keep changing my water. So it's more of a personal choice, I think, more than anything else. I'm still jiggling this to see if I can get you the best view. I'm going to turn the board actually that side. It just stands out a bit more if I put it on the green. There we go, that's better. So um, it should have my pink board really, shouldn't I? I can see it's at the sink at the moment. <laughs> um, so there we go, so we've got that set up like that. So this is starting to get hot and cocoa butter itself, very straightforward. It's just little buttons. They look like little, um, just gonna put some over the other side as well. I'll turn the, the plate round when we go, but they look like um, little, sort of bits of white chocolate to be honest you get a huge bag of them and they last ages so it's one of these things as i've said to you in terms of costs a bag of cocoa butter very cheap and goes an awful long way you can paint massive projects um over you know, a long time with the cocoa butter so you won't need to buy like four or five bags of it one bag at a time is fine and luckily it's got a nice long shelf life on it as well so you don't need to worry about that and then the products that we use to paint with are dusting colours. So we're going to be using dusting colours rather than doing um, gels or pastes or any of anything else. So you can use any dust. So it can be a luster dust or it can be a um, one of these, which is a tint, a blossom tint, which I've just thrown all over my, of course I have, just thrown all over my picture. Um, and that's what I tend to use. So I'm going to start with this one. So this is petal blue colour. It's an edible, edible art colour. Let me just get this off. There we go. That's better. I have to incorporate that extra bit of blue I've just thrown over everywhere. I'm reading some of these comments now. I'd like to do letters on a cupcake topper. How can I transfer the letter without pencil, please? OK, you don't need to use pencil if you don't want to. Um, you can trace your letter but don't turn it over. So you would just trace your letter like so. Don't turn it over. And then you would need a scriber. Now, I haven't got one in front of me, unfortunately. Um, but if you Google the word, or go onto Carol's site, look for the word scriber. You can scratch this image on. The only thing I would say with that is that if you're then painting, you can, if you make holes, which is really typical of people scribing, you can end up with the paint running into the holes. So just be a bit careful with that. Um, pencil itself, it's so minimal. Um, it doesn't matter and actually there's no reason why you can't use pencil but I understand that some people don't want to use pencil so that would be the alternative way of doing it is just by sort of scribing or scratching it onto the um, 
onto the sugar paste, but you will need to make sure your sugar paste is dry as well, because there's no way you'll be able to do it um, if it's um, soft. So let me just clean my brush up. So I clean my brushes with my cocoa butter, so I just use my brush and onto the kitchen paper like this. I've been painting this morning. I'm doing a new project this morning, so busy, busy. My brushes I've got are numbered, which helps because then I can ask you to pick up a certain brush. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Let's clean that one up as well. Oh, there's something brown coming, look. <laughs> as a little hint for you, isn't it? One of my new classes incorporates the colour brown. There you go. Uh, but it's not what you think it is either. I have to leave you to guess that one, but it's probably not what you think. And it's not the one that I accidentally had behind me last week either, if anyone says anything. <laughs> I have one of my projects on display that was behind me. It shouldn't have been there, but that's okay. You all had a sneak preview. Right, I need some white. What have I done with it? Let's get my white dusting colour. My white's in a bag, so let's just tip some white onto here. So we always tone the colours down um, because they're too strong. Hold on. Let's get this white out. There we go. Tone the colours down because then you've got places to go with colour. OK, so you can tone it up and down and then you can do some more shading, you see. So it's nice and easy. So all you do is take your cocoa butter, which is now melted, pick up some of the colour and start mixing. I'm going to pick up some white as well and I'm going to tone this down. I'm not going to make it too pale because um, you're all on camera. Uh, and you need to see what I'm doing. So if I make it really, really pale, you won't be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to, you can see there's a colour difference, um, but I'm not going to make it too pale. So we're mixing a paint. The more cocoa butter we add, the thinner the paint. So you don't want the paint to be really thin. We want a level of coverage with this so that um, it's going to set and we're going to be able to paint over the top of it. So you don't want it to be really thin. Uh, likewise, you need it to be paintable so it doesn't want to be like thick difficult paint to put on either so you want sort of a halfway house between the two I actually need to mix a bit more up actually I've got I've got quite a big letter here so let's put a little bit more in there to start with okay so all I'm going to do then is very simply just follow my line that I've done on here so just follow it through it's not too difficult. And just think of the what you can do with, with a letter. There's so many things you can do. I mean, I picked flowers, um, but you can do anything. Uh, if you want any ideas, Pinterest is good. Go and have a look on there. Put in uh, monograms is a good one to look at. If anybody does wedding cakes, um, this is a really good one to do as well. So if you're somebody who likes wedding cakes, then I often get asked for monograms on the front of cakes. So this is a good way of doing it. Now you can see my coverage is quite good and that's because my paint isn't too thin. So I haven't got huge amounts of cocoa butter in there and it's going on quite flat. If you put in lots of extra cocoa butter, your coverage won't be so good and you'll also find it will take longer to dry. So um, and we need it to dry fairly quickly because I want to move on and do the flowers that are going to go across it. Um, so I don't want it to be too wet for too long. So just go across there like that. So when we do lots of our painting, um, I do lots of different layers. So I don't normally just do one layer. I just do, um, there we go, lift that up so you can see it. There we go. So you can see the coverage at the moment. So um, the coverage is good on this, but when we do projects like, let me bring the elephant in again. So when we do projects like this one, this one is built up of about five, no, how many think? One, two, three, four layers for this one. So this is, this particular elephant, um, we start off light and get darker and darker and darker. So this is about four different shades of grey on here. And that's kind of how we do it um, in order to be able to kind of pick this up and achieve this effect. So we're not just painting a flat colour and go, there we go, we've done our cake painting. Uh, this morning I'm doing a more simple version, so I am painting sort of fairly flat. But if you do something like this, then we are building colours. And that's the beginner's course as well, is they are being taught to shade and to build their colours as well. So when you look at the panda, for example, it's not just black and white. It's actually quite a lot of shades of grey, extra black, bit of grey under here. Lots of lots more detail than you would actually realise until you look at it closely. It's one of those funny things. People contact me and they say, I've got a black dog. How do I paint a black dog? 
And when you look at the photograph, there's hardly any black in it. It's all shades of grey. And when you point that out, they go, oh, yeah, I didn't see that. Yeah, of course. And then that changes everything. So um, that's a really good way of looking at things. So I'm just putting on some black food colouring here. On this side, I'm letting my letter i'm letting my letter that was a bit of a sentence wasn't it i couldn't have invented that good I if i tried letting my letter dry <laughs> honestly couldn't script some of this could you so the colors i'm using at the moment i'm using pink i'm using um i've got gooseberry green here today only because i couldn't find my woodland green i don't know what i've done with that woodland green's just as good uh, a bit of burgundy, put that one down as well. As I say, you don't use very much, very small amounts of stuff. I'll throw it everywhere, obviously. That's what I normally do anyway. So um, just a few extra colours. Again, with something like this, it's up to you. You can use whatever colours you want to use or um, it's up to you. I mean, I find, to be honest, once you've got kind of the key colours and key colours, I would say, are white, black, red, um, a couple of shades of green, blue, um, dusky pink uh, you, you'll be able to do anything you literally will be able to do anything and you'll love it you'll absolutely love it if anybody's got the mermaid class or the girl with the headphones um, that skin tone color is all built from primary colors rather than just buying skin tone um, we've built it from primary colors and I've shown you how to do that and it's a really interesting way of achieving color and learning how to put your colors down it's it's um, fascinating I love it. You can tell that. <laughs> Very enthusiastic about my painting, if nothing else. Right, so this should be dry. So there you go, I've touched it now. It's a tiny bit wet in that corner, but it is generally dry. So what we're going to do next is we're going to put down a base for these flowers. So I'm going to paint across my blue. I'm just going to turn this around so I get to the white. I'm going to dip my brush. I'm still using brush two. And I'm just going to mix up a little bit of white. So now white is a bit of a pain. If anybody's been mixing white up before, it can be quite lumpy. Um, you kind of have to sort of, um, trying to describe it, sort of pat it down really. Of all the dust that we have to mix, this one is a bit, um, a bit tricky. So if you do think, well, I can't get this, it's all lumpy. Well, just bear with it. Don't overload it with cocoa butter um, and it will, it will sort itself out. So because I'm painting over a colour um, and I want and it's it is dry, but I want to make sure I get that real true colour, then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to literally put down some white over the top there. So just in a circle like that, nothing complicated, looks like a little cloud. And then I'm just going to put another one there as well, just across the um, the letter. OK, so I'm going to do this for everything. I'm just going to do it across the letter. And then I'll do another one there. I'm looking at the colours I've picked for this and thinking, oh, I'm missing a colour here, so I might have to have a rummage in a minute. Um, what we'll do, though, just for spacing purposes, just so we don't lose track of what we're doing, we'll put the others down as well. So I've got one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, if I was a florist, I'd be told off now, wouldn't I? Because everything's normally in fives and sevens, and I'd have to put another one in. Uh, where should I put another one in? Down here. All right, that's probably going to throw me now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There you go. Most things in flowers are one, three, five, and seven. All you florists out there, I'm thinking of you. <laughs> okay, so we just pop that down here. Again, we're just going to let that dry for a minute or two. I'm still using brush number two at the moment. I am looking around if I don't need to clean my brush because I'm going to turn this. I've got white in my brush. I'm turning this round. Hot, hot, hot. I'm going to make a pale pink colour. So I'm go I've got my white on there. I'm just going to pick up some pink and just use the white that's on my brush to achieve that. So this is going to be the base colour of my flowers. So just a pale pink colour. Like so. Okay, it's quite easy to mix. Nothing complicated. So don't do complicated. I'm going to make them a tiny bit darker just so that you can see them on camera. Now, these are still wet at the moment, so we'll just give that a second to dry. While that's while we're waiting, I'm just going to clean my brush again and we'll mix up. I'm going to rummage for my yellow. I can't find my yellow. Let's get that out. I've forgotten that bit. Let's find what we've got here. We've got egg yellow. That's okay. And what's this one? Lemon yellow, that'll do. 
So lemon yellow, primrose yellow is a really nice colour. Let's try this one. You can do whatever flower colours you like really. As long as you've got kind of two shades of it, then you should be fine. You should be able to invent something fabulous. Um, we'll pick up some yellow over here. This is egg yellow. Can we just add some white to that? So it's more of an orangey yellow than the primrose yellow. Primrose yellow is very, very bright yellow in colour. Um, it's like a very true yellow. This one's definitely got a bit of orange in there. It's a warmer colour, slightly warmer colour than primrose. So again, we'll just mix that around. You can just about see it. I'll just turn that a little bit further. I get so carried away and then I forget to look up at the screen to see if you can actually see anything. <laughs> I'll soon know because you'll start telling me. I'm sure of that. Right. Okay. How are we doing? Yep. Yep. Almost dry. So that's good. So what we'll do with the yellow one is we'll just take brush two again. And all I'm going to do is just pat the colour straight over the top like that. So... Uh, it's like if I said to you, right, can you now draw me a circle? You know it's never going to be a circle. It's going to be it's going to be a rough circle, isn't it? Um, so that's what you're doing, basically. So we're just patting a bit of colour down. Put another one in there. Like so. And then just pat it down. So this is a sort of a pinky, yellowy display, I should say. It doesn't matter. You can pick whatever colours you like quite a nice project to do this one just just sat at home just having a go and just seeing what you can come up with um you'd probably surprise yourself actually colors um mixing different colors different shades of green all sorts of things you can really go to town with this yes this is a cocoa butter okay let's do the, the pink ones now because they're now dry as well so we'll switch back to the pink and again i'm just going to pop this onto the white so just dab it down like so and again always fine with cocoa butter painting it's a do you know what it reminds me of novelty cakes so if anyone does novelty cakes out there and I, I learned this lesson years ago when I when I had my students in we were making a cake and we were doing this um novelty cake and they were after about an hour and a half, two hours, they were all really unhappy. And I was thinking, oh dear, what is the problem? I can't understand it. And then suddenly in the last hour, when they've done all the hard work and they've covered it and they've started to add the detail, they were, oh, I love this. This is the best thing ever. And it's going through that phase. And this is cocoa butter painting is exactly the same because every single time I start a project, I think it's not going to work, you know, it's definitely not going to work. And then all of a sudden it turns this corner and you think, oh, of course, it was going to work. I knew that. So <laughs> it is about having some patience with things. And if you're um, impatient, just keep reminding yourself because I can be a little bit impatient at times, but it will turn a corner and it will improve and you will suddenly see a massive difference in what you're doing. So that's that so far. We're going to let those set and we're going to have a look at the greens while we're doing that. Hot, hot. If you hear me saying hot every time I turn this, it is. It's really hot. Right. So we're going to mix now. We've got, what did I say? Gooseberry green. Okay. Gooseberry green, woodland green, spring green. Those are the three colours I like. Moss green is very nice as well, actually. That's a nice colour. So gooseberry green, again, it's very dark. So we're going to use it in its darkest form. And we're also, actually, we could use some woodland green. Let me see if I can find the woodland green as well, because it does, it's quite a nice contrast, that one. If I keep saying, I'm just going to have a look. I've got this huge bag of dusting colours. And um, honestly, every single time I go to look for something, I can't find it. It's absolutely typical. So I, I try, oh, there it is. Oh, I don't believe it. Is that it? I can't read it. Woodland green, wonderful. I found it, I found it. Right, let's pop that in there as well because this is a lovely colour, this one. Don't need much, just a little bit. Might as well use them. Don't forget to like and share the page. I have to remind you to do that. I have to remind myself to remind you to, to like and share the page as well. When people put up their like and share, I think brilliant. They've reminded me. You have to like it or like and share. Be very good. Thank you very much. It just helps the demonstrations for everybody else to see them. OK, so we have got the moss green colour here. And where's my cocoa butter? There it is. I'm just going to pick up a bit of white and just tone that down a bit. So you see the colour difference you get? It's a really nice soft green. It's not um, 
quite sort of a harsh green you don't want this to, to really stand out as being sort of too hard and then with greenery what you want to do I'm going to actually change brushes I'm going to go to brush one which is a little bit thinner there is a zero brush as well if anybody finds that quite tricky so there's a brush that goes down I'm bringing out a zero zero brush as well to really help people so if anybody's struggling there it's got black in it of course it has because I've been painting this morning right let's clean that so I'll actually go to the zero brush so we can have a look at that. There we go. That's better. Oh, well done. You're all liking and sharing. Thank you. There we go. So that's quite a nice green. That's what it looks like in the container. And that's what it looks like. Um, on there so for this all we're going to do now I've got two different shades of leaf on here um, I just decided that I would do two different ones so I'm going to get a nice finish line I'm just going to put a line kind of going down there like that and then we'll put another one where should we stick another one we'll stick another one sort of about there this is where if you're good at flower arranging you're going to you're going to ace this you know you're going to probably be a lot better than me uh, it's remote it's like a pedestal <laughs> Um, uh, let's have a look so we'll pull that down like so and then we'll put another one like that so we'll have them sort of going up and down those are the first colors because we can do different colors anyway and then when you paint your leaves it's it is important you try and get them to a point with this one anyway you try and get them to a point have them coming off the stem you can do whatever you like I'm going to turn it so I can see it a bit better if I can look I've got those going out and I wanted them down I'm going the wrong way never mind never mind I'll have them going that way now just to change the direction there we go that's better they went up and then they went down <laughs> right let's do this one up here so keep the brush up I just had a brief look to see if there's anything I need to comment on but we're okay at the moment And then we'll come down to this one here. I hope you can see it all on camera. Yeah, you can. That's good. I say sometimes I get so carried away, I don't realise that you can't see what I'm doing. Also, as well, I found that actually not filling in the leaves and leaving them a little bit sort of open makes them look more delicate as well. So don't feel inclined to sort of shade everything in. Leave them, leave them a little bit. Open. Now that one's tucked in behind that rose there, so that's okay. I'm going to show you what I mean by that if I pick that up. Can you see on that one there, I haven't coloured them in completely. This one I have, but these I haven't. So what that does, it just makes them look a little bit lighter in terms of the appearance of them. So that's something you can do. Don't always feel that you must, must shade everything in. I've just got to... nearly there right so too sure how long this would take me today it's taken me longer than I thought it would take that's probably because I'm talking too much I'm sure if you were concentrating and not talking like me you'd do it a lot quicker <laughs> Do I know when Carol is doing the draw for the likes and shares? I honestly don't know that answer. Carol will know, I'm sure. And she does read these, so she will, um, I'm sure she will give you an answer um, to that question. So I, I'm not entirely sure. Um, I know that she does lots of liking and sharing and vouchers and things. And she's always announces her, her winners on her Facebook page when she's live, I believe. So I'm sure Carol will let you know. I'm reading the thing about the comment about canal boats. Do you know what? I went walking around a canal this weekend and I was fascinated by the whole thing. It's that whole folk art stuff. Very interesting. Very interesting. 
some beautiful stuff down on those canals. Now I've just taken the woodland green and added some white to it. So you can see I've, I've ended up with two tones of green. So that was my moss green. Oh, no, it wasn't. It was my gooseberry green. And this was the woodland green. So because if when you look at greenery, it doesn't always tend to be the same. So when you look at, you're going to be obsessed with looking at bushes now when you go outside. <laughs> when you go outside and have a look at, say, some... Um, greenery together it's never the same green it's always lots of different green colors so we want a, a mixture we don't want to just pick one green we need a couple of greens to make sure it it stands out it is different so i'm just doing if you see already it looks um very different there oh somebody's answered your question good yes yeah, so i don't i don't know the answer but if i know the answer i will tell you so there you go i'm not sure on that one Everybody on here seems very knowledgeable. So if I don't know the answer, they do, which is great. So, okay, we'll just carry on with this. So say, if you are someone who does flower ranging, you should be thriving at this. You'll find this very easy to place your flowers or sugar flowers. Lots of people do sugar flowers, don't they, in cakes. So it's all coming together now. Let's put some in behind here as well. So we'll put one come out from there. So you can just place them wherever you want, really. I mean, mine is coming out slightly different to the one I did um, yesterday. And that doesn't surprise me either. I know someone's going to say, now, why haven't I put white down for those leaves? And the reason I haven't done that is because they are green and they will go over the top, whereas something like pink doesn't tend to cover particularly well so that's why I haven't done it on there so if anybody's looking at it going well she's just painting green over that blue it's because it's a darker green colour and it's going to cover so I do do these things for a reason you know I don't make it up <laughs> I do sometimes and I'm winging it um, but generally um, so these are very simple shapes just literally a leaf shape and already we've got quite a nice display going on there have a look at that so far so that's not that's coming on okay right let's clean our brush again uh, we're going to actually before I do that I'm just going to wipe the excess off I'm going to switch back to the other green so I won't bother to take off all the woodland green and we'll just put in a little bit of extra detail here some so we can put some sort of berries or something in here later so we'll just do some very fine bits there there we go and we'll do some down here as well on the opposite side I did do a flower arranging course years ago um, <laughs> uh, when the wedding cake started to have loads of fresh flowers on it I started to panic and think I need to know a bit more so um, but I don't think I was top of the class so <laughs> I've got the rough idea but um, I'm sure there are much better painters out there than me when it comes to things like this but um We'll give it a go anyway so we'll just pop that over there different shapes as well but one of the very very first lessons i ever did was um with the um um with the flower course was the first thing they did was we're going to do a, a lesson putting foliage together and i thought what on earth is she talking about it's all green and then when i looked at it and saw all the different shapes and the colors actually foliage is really interesting that sounds quite sad but it is and you can create some amazing foliage displays that last absolutely ages because they don't die like the flowers do so have a look at that as well it's you know great big fans and long ruscus and all sorts of things so yeah OK, so that's that bit there. I'm just going to clean my brush up a bit better. Actually, I did that very roughly. So let's get rid of that. OK, so that's that. Right. While that's all drying, what we'll do is we'll just do an outline. Now I'm going to change back to brush one. I'm going to make them a little bit um, this line a bit thicker. So it's going to go around the outside edge of the letter. Now, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. So if you think, oh, no, I don't want to outline. I'm not too sure. Steady hand and all that. What I would suggest you do, though, is tone it down. Just grab a little bit of white. And make a dark grey rather than a black. Um, a black is um, it's very strong. A dark grey is much softer. Uh, think about that as well. If anybody does people modelling or anything like that, if you come to do eyelashes, don't do black ones. Do a nice dark grey colour. It just makes it look less less harsh. 
bit more natural. Um, so all I'm going to do with this brush, have I got brush one? Yes, I have, is just follow the outside edge. Let's get a bit more cocoa butter in there. There's nothing coming out. Follow the outside edge down like so. And I'm not trying to do it all in a straight line. You can see I keep going back. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be perfectly straight, but it, it'll be okay for what I need it to do. Turn it. Don't make life difficult for yourself and try and paint at strange angles. Always try and help yourself as best you can. If anyone's into calligraphy, this would be good. A little bit of practice there. I quite like calligraphy, actually, but I haven't had a chance to study it for a few years. That's the sort of thing I did when I was really young, but calligraphy could be really good for this. And go up here. And we'll just go under that leaf there. I didn't put the black down deliberately because what I didn't want to do was then have to paint over the black because then that starts getting a lot more complicated. Um, go up here. Just paint around it. You've got your lines, so I'm not making this up. I mean, I'm upside down. I have no idea what part of the letter I'm on particularly, but it doesn't matter because I've got lines to follow. So I'm sure when I turn it back the other way, it'll be absolutely fine. And that is what I'm trying to get people to do is to not panic when they're painting. So if you are thinking, gosh, I can't do that. Honestly, I bet you can. It really is something that is nice and easy to do. And there's so much joy in painting. I have to say, I really like it. And to the point, actually, that my daughter has bought me a painting by numbers. I am cursing it a little bit, but she, don't tell her. Um, but it's fine because it's just tiny, tiny little shapes. But she's enjoying it. So um, I spend all day painting and then go home and do some more painting. So I'm doing more painting than anything else at the moment. Apart from Mondays when I'm doing my chocolate. So we go across like so, nearly there. So just keep when you're using your brushes just use the appropriate brush for you so i'm using brush one uh, for me um, there is a zero brush as well and i say there will be a zero zero brush coming out soon shortly as well just to try and help people who are really struggling with some of this thinner work because you do need to have that brush up high and you just need to keep going with it okay and just nearly around the corner okay lovely now you can make this thicker or thinner so if you don't like this you might well, I actually did my original one is actually a bit thicker than this so um, I must have been in that mood that day so it just depends what you want so you can go back and go around it again but I'm just going to leave it to dry now um, and then we'll just clean our brush up again yeah someone else has just said they find it relaxing it is it's very relaxing painting it's one of these things you can sit and do it in front of the television you can just Basically, spend Sunday afternoon with a paint palette in front of you. Set yourself a couple of projects. Follow some of my lives. My pre-recorded stuff is you can start and stop when you want. That's nice. So you can just do it at your own pace. You haven't got to worry about trying to keep up with anybody else. You can just enjoy it. And that's ideal, isn't it? Right, that's that. Okay, let's put some detail onto the roses now. So I'm going to use, she says I've turned it too far. I'm going to use some burgundy colour here now. So let's get the cocoa butter and just make a little bit of burgundy up. I'm actually going to leave it at full strength, this one. I'm not going to tone, well, I'll tone it down a tiny bit, not too much, just a little bit. Um, because so you can still see it. What brush have I got here? Brush one. Okay, that's all right. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my brush up um, high and I'm going to paint some little half circles. Now, if you can't quite see this, I will lift this picture for you to see in a minute. But I'm just going to paint some half circles that go all the way around to create these little roses. So let me pick that up so you can see it better. OK, oh, in fact, I'll even go in a bit closer. Let's find the camera there. So I've just painted some little circles there. All right, so they're little half circles again. Let's just carry on. My plate warmer, food warmer, chrome food warmer is an Amazon item. OK, so you need to go to Amazon to get these. I don't stock them and neither does Carol. 
Um, you can pick them up on Amazon for about between five and ten pounds. Um, so they're very easy to get hold of. And you only need one. You're never going to need another one, but you might need a, a spare pack of tea lights. Just remember to get yourself some tea lights as well. But my goodness me, you can buy loads of those very cheaply as well. Um, so don't forget your tea lights. They often come with one, but um, you soon go through that. Okay, and this one here. Again, you just finish these round. Like so, you can see those hopefully now I'm going to lift that up again so you can have a closer look. Oh, it might help if I got it on camera. Okay. And then we'll have a go at the yellow ones. So let's get rid of the burgundy. So clean our brush again. Now, what am I going to do with those? I'm going to use a bit of, oh, did I put egg yellow down? I can't remember now. Let's put there. I have a shocking memory at the moment. <laughs> Keep leaving my car keys in all sorts of strange places honestly in the ignition in the car park yesterday i went in had a full meal came out thought I my car keys i'd left them in the ignition i mean honestly <laughs> what am i like right i'm just going to put a few extra a few extra buttons down here because i've gone through everything so i've gone through about 10 literally so i'm just going to put another four down very very few amounts of um color so nothing too drastic here i say it's very cheap right let's grab some egg yellow and we'll just mix that am i on screen yes i am so i'll just mix that egg yellow up i'm just looking for a contrast between the lemon yellow and the egg yellow really so i'm just making it nice and straightforward i've actually put too much cocoa butter in there i can feel it swimming around so let's add a bit more right there we go that's better so your challenge is to pick your initial pick an initial and have a go and when you've done it you can post them on these um on the sugar and crumbs page or you can go across to my facebook page and post them on there and you can tag me in them and then I can have a look and see how you've got on. I'm going to look to see what lovely ideas you've got as well. So um, let's have a look. So all I'm going to do here, oh, I need to get a bit more going here. And then we can just... like so just swirl it round so we've got two rose colors going on here you can pick your own rose colors it's up to you you can do whatever you like i can do them all the same i've got one thing i've missed actually which i need to go back and do in a second but we'll get to that in a minute okay let's bring that up so you can have another look there we go, see it's all developing now nicely. Okay, that's fine. Right, let's pop that in there. Just clean the brush again. So I'm just gonna go back to the burgundy color. And I'm just gonna put, let's grab a little bit from over there. Both Carol and I have cocoa butter on our site. So if you are looking for cocoa butter, have a look on my website and also Carol's website. Am I going to the NEC? Absolutely, I am. Yes, I am going to the NEC. I've got lots to do there. I'm demonstrating. I've got my own stand. I've got some Cake International stuff to do. So yes, I will definitely be at the NEC. I've signed up. So with the burgundy colour, all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put a few little berries on this sort of bits that I've put out here. So you can use red if you want to. I'll just use burgundy because that's what I've got. Don't make life too complicated today. Just put some little berries on the end there. So we've had lots of information on the NEC today about what's, um, what's going to be happening. So it's all sounding really good. I'm looking forward to it. And then you just add some more berries down here. Um, gypsophilia, people know what I mean by gypsophilia, like baby's breath, that always looks really lovely as well. 
um, you can always do something like that. I'm reading this now. If you are obviously keeping a plaque and not eating it, can you use ordinary watercolour paints? Do you know what? I have got a few students um, that are not cake makers that are using acrylics um, and following my lessons. So yeah, absolutely. Give it a go. If you're not going to eat it and you want to do it with watercolour, um, not watercolour, acrylics, yeah, give it a go. See what happens. Or water, or water. I think watercolours, I don't know a huge amount about those because I've not used them before, but certainly with acrylic, if you wanted to follow this and do it that way, yes, you could do that. Um, what was I going to do? I've forgotten now. Oh, yeah, I was going to put some buds on. There's something missing. So a few little rose buds on here. Just got to find a space to put them. So all you would do is just take your rose colour and just make sort of like a, a half um, V shape somewhere. We'll put another one there like that gotta have a few buds otherwise it looks looks a bit odd without them so we'll just pop those in we'll join them up in a second you can make these as i say you can do whatever you want with the extra bits that are around there it's just that kind of detail just looks nice i think yeah i'm going to the, when i am going to the nec i'm going to the nec with my um cocoa butter painting hat on i won't be going with chocolate i don't think at the moment so um if you want the chocolate stuff you'll still need to you'll have to tune in on tuesday nights when i go live with all my demos on here um, and carry on with my chocolate stuff so let's just join those buds up so i'm just going to take a bit of woodland green what brush am i on brush one that's okay and then if i just go around the back of that bud there a little bit more it's a bit dark enough so you can see it just bring that round just tuck it in behind the the rose try not to do straight lines one of the things people do with flowers is they do everything straight just be aware of that just make sure everything kind of curls round and if you can't see it it's because it's tucked underneath something then don't paint it okay that's nice and easy too as well don't fall into that trap nearly there I'm just going to put a highlight up the letter T in a minute okay so we've got a few rosebuds in there as well that baby's breath I was talking about earlier like gypsophilia I'll show you what you can do with that as well because that's so lovely I'm reading here. You've done, I've done some acrylic painting as well. I've done a bit. I have just haven't done any um, watercolour. I can see it spreading watercolour and I'm not sure what to do with it to control it. I could see it racing around. I think, oh, I'm not sure about this. So I'm just going to go back to the white and I've got, I've changed over to my zero brush now. So I've got a nice, really, really tiny brush. Just be careful when you're mixing with your paint brushes because you don't want to end up really causing loads of... Um, damage to your brushes and whenever you clean your brushes at the end okay so once you've finished clean them with cocoa butter and then just run them under the hot tap and then don't leave them standing in a container you need to leave them standing upwards otherwise you're going to damage all the bristles so never leave them down always leave them standing up okay and then with this you can literally just put a few dabs of the little white if you're finding it's picking up a colour then go back and do some more white. I will hold this up at the end so you can see it. So if you're you're thinking, well, I can't see what she's doing, I will show you. And I will also put this picture on my Instagram page so you can have a nice close-up look there as well. So if you follow me at the end, you'll be able to go and have another look. Because cameras are good, but they don't show you everything um like this not with the distance i've got my phone at anyway if you're right on the online classes you can see everything on there so just spread this out also it covers loads of mistakes you've ever heard people say um if you've made a mistake on a cake stick a flower on it well <laughs> if you've made a mistake on this just put some um gypsophilia over the top of it that'll be fine so you can always spread it out I think it's really pretty and it really softens it as well. I look like I've been on a flower course here this morning. Right, and then one last thing with my white. I'm just going to put 
a line just down the side of my letter here just so it makes it look a bit more 3D. So I'm just taking some white paint, going down the side of the black, just so it makes it sort of stand out a little bit more. That doesn't look totally flat. I'm still using the zero brush at the moment. I'm not, I haven't changed over or done anything odd. I think that's it. I think we've done it. I think we're there. Let's put a little bit. You can also use the white for highlights as well. You can just pop little patches of white amongst your roses as well. That makes them pop as well. Let me lift this up so you can have a really good look. There we go. How about that? That's not looking too bad, is it? Got a whole flower arrangement thing going on there. So as I say, I will take a picture of this and I will put it on my Instagram shortly. So if you want to have a look at it so you can see... Um, exactly what it is it's, um, that I've done. If you want to follow the tutorial, then you'll be able to go back and just follow it from there. So pick your, pick your letter, go on to Word, pick a letter, and then just basically make up yourself. So you, you need to go back. Um, if you've just joined, I'm about, oh, I'm close to finishing now because I've been on for an hour. Um, then do go back to the beginning and watch the full demonstration. Please remember to like and share. Um, that would be good. Where would you place the flowers on a V? Um, well, if it was a V like that, I would probably place them just maybe even going across like this, just across the V at the bottom. You could even sort of have it coming sort of from there down so it goes like that. So you don't distort the V completely. Um, so if, if your V is like that, start here, come down and then sort of trail it off at the bottom like that. So just you could even try and draw something on a piece of paper even by using things like um do your letter i'll show you what i mean really simple so we're not over complicating this so let's pretend we don't have a letter so we're going to do the letter let's do the letter v i can just do the letter v out like that and then i can go right where do i want to put my flowers i could go i'm gonna go like that that's going to be my layout so that's going to be my main roses and then everything else above that I can then trail around my letter so you can do it like that so as long as you can still maintain that that shape and you can still see your letter then you can lay your flowers out accordingly like that so that's what I would say to you is go to word pick a letter um, use the uh, fonts that are in there so that you can create your own obviously I've done the letter T and then go from there so there you go hopefully that's inspired a few of you this morning right I've reappeared <laughs> it's been a long one this morning normally I'm on for sort of 45 minutes but I'm over my time today but it's nice just to kind of sit and look at everything and just break it all down and go through it with you everywhere and I'm more than happy to answer any of your demonstrate uh, any of my demos because I read the word demonstration there answer any of your questions um that's absolutely fine uh do get in touch with me my website is coming up here so that's where you'll find everything that I teach in terms of online cake painting we have pre-recorded lessons for beginners, we have live lessons for people to paint along with me. You you pick. And the live lessons are £10. The beginners course, which is what I talked about at the start, is on offer at the moment. Um, it's four lessons and it's or four projects. It's not four lessons, it's four projects. And it's um it's uh, what are we on at the minute it's 35 pound my brain is not in engaging today <laughs> it's 35 pound versus 50 so it is on offer at the moment and you do get the lovely certificates which i had up here earlier i'm just i was going to touch one then but then i thought no i'm covered in um dusting color it's not a good idea if anyone receives theirs with dusting color prints all over it you'll know it will be me um so yeah if you want to join the beginners class the beginners class has only been live about three weeks now and they are all painting brilliantly around this particular group there is a closed Facebook group as well so you are not left on your own so if you're thinking oh I sign up for this class and then perhaps feel a bit demotivated by the whole thing and not too sure when to start and I can't do it I give you access to a closed Facebook group and on there you'll see all the other students painting and you'll suddenly think oh 
I need to do this? It's so exciting because they are all painting brilliantly considering we've only just started. Some of them are finished already. They've been painting furiously. It's been amazing. And hopefully as well, it will inspire you because people will say things like, well, I found this really difficult. And you'll think, yeah, I found that difficult too. And some of those support things that you get from something like that, it's really, really helpful and can really, you know, basically get you through something that you're trying to do because it's lovely to have a lesson in a class but actually I think online cake painting is a better way of learning than doing it in a class because you have the camera straight over and you can see everything you've got students around you that can help and I'm here to help as well so if you do have any questions I'm more than happy to help you so anyone who wants to see the uh, letter t up close pop over to instagram there is one on there already that I did yesterday but I'll put this one up now so you can see that as well because i i've done two slightly different designs well don't look at the blue that i spilt at the start so just ignore that bit um <laughs> it's just exploded as i open the container um but yeah do please go over and have a look and if you follow me on instagram you will find that every week i normally post the next project that i'm going to be doing so you'll be able to um, have a look as well and then also sign up to the sugar and crumbs newsletter because i um they often are sent out so people get a bit of advance warning about what's coming and what's available to watch including all of carol's there's my facebook page as well do pop over there it's very similar name to my instagram page funny that so all the information's on there as well and you'll be able to find that out if you have any questions um, and you would like to ask any questions if i'm not on instagram don't worry it's on facebook as well but if you do have any questions with regards to cake painting do please get in touch more than happy to help you as i say i'm normally here every week and i will be back next week i am only here on thursday morning so no monday evenings next week I, i've done three on the trot so i'm having a mini break before we hit october november and december and i will be on three out of four tuesday evenings going forward so I will be on there doing a combination of chocolate and uh, cake painting as well so Tuesday nights will be my my new place for you to find me although I will still be here on Thursday mornings I don't doubt that I'm sure that will still happen anyway so have a lovely weekend it looks like it's about to bucket with rain here any minute now so I'm pleased we've got through the demo we're not risking thunderstorms or anything else going on so have a lovely weekend and enjoy all the lives and the information that is here on the Sugar and Crumbs Nifty Nozzle page. And I will see you all next week. Bye for now.